talk about that's really important for us? Here so far, we have a lot of really strong teams. As uh, you noted in the pregame, the Chaos, they've won four championships. They're two and two right now. So, you know, it's it's been uh, – it's been a very interesting beginning of the season, and um, as we move forward, you know, we expect a lot more uh, challenging games as we move forward. But if anybody wants to follow us, you can find us on Facebook, Gridiron Football League. Um, you can always look up Midwest on that, too, because there's a few GFLs in the nation. Uh, if you want to look us up online, GFLMW.com. If you're looking to look up the chaos, it's uh, ChicagoChaosFootball.com. Uh, we always try to keep things updated, league stats, videos, uh, constant updates. Like tonight, I'm updating the Facebook as the game goes along here. And, you know, I'd just like to say thank you to you guys, you know, for allowing us a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, we appreciate it. Of course, we appreciate you having it in here, Adam, because, uh, you know, it's nice to get another viewpoint. Uh, and on top of that, you know a lot of these players. You know a lot of what's going on. You even mentioned that you would potentially were, uh, like, looking into – just working with the team. Yeah, working with the closely. team, right. Mm -hmm. It's it's just one of those things that during the uh, during the, the winter, you know, a lot of things come and go, opportunities come and go. But, uh, you know, I, I ended up taking on more of a league role. But the chaos I've always been very close to. I work very close with their owner, Mike Melody. He's a good guy. He's built a really quality organization. Um, you know, and, it, yeah, I do know a fair amount of these players, including where they came from and the reason why they joined the chaos. And, you know, it's, it speaks a lot to your organization when you have players who come to you from solid organizations themselves just because they want to be a part of something uh, a little bit greater. So, you know, they're always somebody that we look at and uh, point to as um, someone to emulate. Cool. Well, we, we really appreciate uh, your insight and uh, thanks for having, you know, us being able to do this too because, uh, you know, we, we really relish the opportunity to get a chance to call uh, some football here and, on a great night, especially here at a, at a great field here at Benedictine yeah. University. So uh, we may hold we may host our championship game here. Uh, coming down here was both to watch the game, maybe help you guys out, and you've been very accommodating. Mm -hmm. But also to look at the field and uh, and how everything sets up. It's a beautiful campus, definitely. And um, you know we may actually host our championship game here this year. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, keep us posted on yeah. that, Adam. Uh, we definitely want to know because uh, great league, some great football. Uh, you know, you you get a chance to see some football up close and you don't have to pay a lot of money to go see it which is really great and you know a lot of players they're they're really approachable uh, especially you know for the chaos uh, I've had a chance to interact with a lot of them uh, Sean yourself also have had a chance to interact with them and they're very accommodating they'll give you time of day you know a lot of times you'll see athletes oh, I don't want to talk to you and all this but none of these guys these guys are all great guys they're really down to earth and you know they just want to come out and play some fun and you know have some fun and play some football exactly Mike they're doing this for fun they're doing it for the love of the game which everyone loves you know when you hear someone they play the game for the love of it not not to get paid and obviously we're not getting paid but for guys to come out here and play on a night like this a hot summer night it, it's just for the love of the game like i said yeah so we're getting ready here to start the beginning of the second half the chaos are going to receive the ball. It seemed like they received the ball at the beginning of the first half, too, right after the kickoff. They had a first play. They, they got a pick. So let's see what the chaos can do right out of halftime. They need to make some adjustments because their offense, aside from that short drive that they had for the first uh, possession, they really haven't done much on offense, Sean. No, not much at all, Mike. They had the long return, which gave them the second touchdown and tied the game at 14. So... As we get underway here, here we go. All right, and here we go. There is the kickoff. Oh, oh they squibbed it. That's a short kick. They good. were trying to catch them off guard. It didn't work. So this is going to give the chaos really good field position. It's a great start for the chaos, Mike. They're right at about the 48-yard line. The onside kick. It's hard to say whether or not that's a good decision. I mean, it's a closed game, so you might not want to give away field position. But if there's a time to surprise somebody, it's certainly right there. You just hope as a kicker to get a better bounce. But, yeah. you know, that that's one of those 50-50 things. That's exactly, Adam. That's the Sean Payton play coming out of halftime. Yeah, right? yeah, the <laughs> Saints pulled that off. Uh, <laughs> so you, you you don't see that, and you know, especially with coming out of halftime. Like Adam said, you have the opportunity to kind of figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it to game plan everything. They unfortunately, uh, they didn't game plan it all the way correctly, and – 
this is the end result. So the Chaos are going to get the ball here at the 48-yard line. Uh, there's the snap. There's the throw to the left side. It uh, looks like it's going to be caught. Oh, it's not going to be caught. Looks like it's going to be an incomplete pass. We're starting to half with some chippiness already here. That was a little bit of a late shot on the cue. Here we go with the replay. Not much yeah. time. He can't set his feet, Mike, in which makes the throw a little bit short, and the receiver, number five, can't – Donnell Salas can't get his hands under the ball there. Yeah, that's unfortunate because he was open. Uh, if he – if Suchuk got a little bit more air under that, he probably would have taken it upfield for a few extra yards to get him downfield. But, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So, that's going to be an incomplete pass. It's going to bring up second and ten from the 48-yard line of the chaos. Again, they are going to come out in two wide receivers on each side, a running back to the right of Suchuk in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's looking, throwing down to the right side. That's going to be tipped by one of the linebackers for an incomplete pass. Sean, what did you think of that play? Mike, as we look at the replay here, there's just not much time. Again, the Thunder are getting some pressure up the middle there in the A-gap. And it's just not allowing Suchuk to get much into his throws. Yeah, that's unfortunate because he's had some open receivers. And without being able to set your feet and get in a strong throw, you can't really do anything. So, Roughing the passer there, Oh, Mike. they're going to do a roughing the passer. And just like you said, Adam, in the play before that, there's a little chippiness on the quarterback, on Suchuk. So it continues in the second half, unfortunately. Uh, well, fortunately for the chaos, unfortunately for the Thunder, but we don't if, really If anything, mind. that play was, as a defender, you get one step to hit the quarterback. On that play, it looked like he only took that one step. Mm -hmm. The play before, he took four. So you're thinking that might be a makeup call, Adam? I would hate to say that. Um, it depends on, you know, did he hit him with his helmet? Was, you know, did he hit him a little high? But I would say that of the two plays, it was the first one, which was the actual All right, well, that's going to really help the chaos here. So they're going to move the chains. It's going to give them a first down from the 38-yard line of the Thunder. Again, two wides on each side, one running back to the left side of Shuchuk in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's going to look to the right side, throws it short. Uh, receiver caught the ball, but I'm not sure if he's going to get anything there. It looked like he was knocked out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. So we haven't seen that play today, Sean. Yeah, it's just a quick little uh, hitch on the outside there. Oh, a little screen pass. They got the block on the outside, but Thunder do a good job of running it down and making the play. Yeah, so that's good. Oh, go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, remember, at the end of the first half, he was really running around trying to do too much. This is the chaos offensive offensive coordinator just trying to calm him down, get him a couple easy completions, mm -hmm. and, get, and take advantage of a really over-aggressive Thunder. Yeah, to kind of get the confidence flowing yeah. back for him. Uh, he didn't complete as many passes in the first half as he would have liked. So again, two wide receivers on each side. Oh, there's some uh, movement on the offensive line. That looked like uh, big no number 88. That's Thomas Loving. Uh, he actually, this is his first game back. He's coming off of a torn to MCL. He's a large man. I got a chance to talk to him down in the field. He is standing at 6'5", 263. Uh, went to the University of Michigan, played professionally for the Seattle Seahawks. So he's had a lot of experience playing football. Unfortunately, uh, that play didn't go well for him. So it's going to push the chaos back five yards. And here on this second and 15 play, Sean, do you expect a pass here? It looks like it, Michael. Like We've been talking about the swing passes, the quick passes. Just get them in a rhythm here. Yeah, again, so two wides on each side. Uh, running back to the right of Suchuk in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's going to look to his right. Pump fake. He's scrambling out of the pocket. There's a flag. There's an incomplete pass on the right side, on the close side. Suchuk's uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. no. Yeah. It looked like he was a little slow to get up there. But, but there, the defender is a, is a little bit slow to get up. So let's wait to see what the flag was. Uh, Number 12 it's for the, the Thunder. It's in looks the vicinity hurt. of holding, Mike. And that's going to be no good for the Cavs. So the athletic trainers are going to come and take a look at the injured Thunder player at the moment. Oh, it's going to be hands to the face on the Thunder. So that's going to move. That's, is that going to basically reset there? Are they going to get a first down on this, correct? First down it is, Mike. Yeah, so that's going to reset that last penalty, give him the first down, and 
They're actually gonna gain 15 yards out of this. So that's a that's a gift that the Thunder have that given the chaos. chaos. Uh, looks First like their player number 12, uh, he's walking off on his own power. So that's good Double to see. So uh, the chaos are huddling about 25 to 30 yards. I think, <laughs> I think the official's letting them know, Mike. Okay, so they're huddling about 30 yards behind where the ball is lined up. So they've got quite a hike to get. They don't want anyone to, to the hear line of scrimmage. Like. Yeah, apparently it's a big secret as to what they're going to be running on this next play. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion. Uh, some of the Thunder players think that the ball should have been spotted closer. Well, they're asking for an injury timeout. This is what I can hear from the crowd, Mike. Oh, there's another flag. Another, oh, he's out, I think. Oh, looks like the coach might have been thrown out. They just tossed someone, Mike. It looks like a coach could potentially have been thrown out there. On the far sideline there. Yeah, he was talking to one of the side referees. Of the he's side coming out onto the field, yeah. Mike, again. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Somebody oh. might want to stop him. Yeah, so one of the other coaches needs to kind of get in into the, the coach and let him know that, that he needs to settle down. You know, without us actually going down there, we don't really know. He's pointing some fingers here. Oh. What do you think is going on, Sean? Oh, it looks it, nothing crazy here. He's, it looks calm. He's talking to the official. Clearly he had an issue with one of the referees. And now the official's letting him uh, kind of tell his story, it looks like. Well, so Adam, explain to me what happens if a, co uh, if a coach gets thrown out, if a player gets thrown out, as we see, what, what are the repercussions that are going to happen? Well, in all the years that I've coached, generally you only have one or two people who speak to the referees. Either it's the coach, just the head coach himself, or the head coach and the assistant coach. And you basically tell all the other coaches, you do not talk to the refs. Because what could happen is, let's say you have three coaches, let's say you have 15, you have too many guys talking to the refs. All of a sudden, they're going to start to feel like they're getting screamed at and they're getting overtaken. So they're going to start getting really angry. Um, I would bet that that is not the Thunder head coach. And in that case, he should definitely, number one, not be on the field. And number two, he should probably not be addressing the refs, which is probably a main reason why he's been tossed in this game. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like he's definitely walking so off. So, yeah, they're going to give him an unsportsmanlike on the Thunder. Sean, keep an eye on him to see what's going on. He is ejected. Uh, it does look like he's walked behind the benches back there. Uh, he's crouching down a little bit. I think he's a little angry at himself because that not only costs his team 15 yards. Mike, how, look at how big of a swing that is that's just in penalties. That's 30 yards right there. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's absolutely enormous. Uh, so the momentum, obviously, it's swinging back to the chaos side. And that's what we want to see. We want to see the other team get rattled. And apparently coming out of half, they've been rattled. They tried that onside kick, was unsuccessful to give the Chaos a short field. And now they've given First them 30 the yards well, and also, in penalties. Also, the Thunder players, they are not thinking about the next play. They're thinking about why are we moving the ball back? Why has our coach been taken out? They're, they're not, their corner number 21, I'm watching him. He's just walking around in circles talking to himself. <laughs> They're not thinking about the next play. Yeah, well, <laughs> it looks like 21 might be lost a little bit out there. So uh, here we go with the next play. Again, two wide receivers on each side. Uh, running back to the left of Suchuk. Shotgun snap. There's the handoff. Uh, there's a little confusion there. Suchuk ends Ooh, up keeping it. Big hit spins. up. Spins. Uh, he's going to get to about the 11 to 10 yard line right there. So he's going to get only a couple yards on that quarterback keeper. Uh, it looked this like on the replay, Sean, there looks like be a on? big gap right here, right here, Mike. He, he puts it in the belly, decides to keep it. The Thunder just uh, make a good play there on the defensive end of the ball. And he takes on, Suchuk takes another big hit, Mike. Yeah, we haven't seen him make that one big play. I've seen a few games uh, for the chaos, and typically he can get outside the pocket and scramble or on a designed run like that, uh, cut up field and get 20 to 30 yards. So he's been bottled up this afternoon. Uh, again, they're going to go three wide receivers to the near side. One at the top, a uh, wide receiver, I'm sorry, a running back to the left of him. There's a shotgun snap. He's looking, 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 looking. Uh, he's just kind of sitting around. Hey, you know what? Oh. He did a 
really bad job right there. He's got to get rid of the ball he's there, He's got to know. His internal clock has got to know. At worst, he throws it out of the end zone at being in this situation. He's costing him team some yards. Well, if you get a chance to look at the, uh, the replay, right his, on the his, line, his the running, running back, back swing right there. No, yeah. And it, being a scrambling quarterback, right about now you get out of the pocket, you throw the ball out of bounds. And even um, it, and even the defender being there, you, you give him give him the ball with some space to run, and you make you make a def defender miss. Right, you, you know? got to give him the opportunity. And they did, and Suchuk didn't. Uh, took a very costly sack there, which is going to bring up a third and long, which is going to be about 18 yards there. And this is uh, not the position that they I thought they would be in. We're looking at the replay, Mike. Like Adam said, if you give him a little swing pass, you give him an opportunity to make a man miss. He may have something. Right. So they're going to come out here in a two wide receiver set on each side. A running back to the left in the shotgun. There's the Sab. Suchuk's looking to the right. Scrambles to the right. He's going to take off. He's not going to get too many. He's going to get sandwiched, but he fights up to get about six yards. So he's going to put him right at the 14-yard line, which is uh, about a yard short of the original line of scrimmage. You'd have to think in this situation, uh, they don't have a lot of faith in Kozlowski to kick this field goal. They're probably going to go for it, right, Adam? Well, he's over for 2 this season in field goals. Uh, the one they tried last week actually was left. They never made it more than five feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, going back to shoot Chuck real fast, going back to the first half, I think this is out of the last like seven plays. He's taken big Some hits in about six of those. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to take a toll, including not you know on that sack that he took his decision making and those type of things. Exactly. He is he not dis, uh, making good decisions right now at all. Yeah, it looks like he's a little rattled mentally, um, possibly physically too, with taking all those hits like Adam was explaining. So let's see if he can make a good decision here on this fourth and 11 play. Three wide receivers to the near side, one up at the top, uh, running back to his left in the shotgun formation. Uh, he's looking, staying in the pocket. There's a flag. He's got a man over the middle. He's going to be gonna in be for a touchdown. Gonna be but caught. let's wait and see what happens with the flag. Nice. It looks like some of the chaos players he's are celebrating. But let's wait flag. until the officials get the call here. It might. It's. Is that might uh, another hand to the face there? Him. It looked like it could have been a hold. Let's see what that the hold might be costly. And, and let's Both get, teams are clapping. Yeah, it's a, and, oh, touchdown. Touchdown. Unsportsmanlike penalty. Another unsportsmanlike personal oh, penalty. Oh, it's going to be on the chaos. And he's ejected. And he's been ejected. This is just the refs well, trying to take oh, control then, of the game. And then Two ejections. I, so that's going to be offsetting penalties. Right. Now, the question Replay. is, the, does the touch? Adam, I don't believe the touchdown will count. They're going to redo no, the down. Is that correct? The touchdown counts. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done that. Okay. The, the penalties, it seems, I mean, he doesn't have a. Are they going to offset? It, it came after the play. They should offset, so okay. the touchdown should stay. Oh, so so that happened after the play. Yeah. Okay. And, and let's give I'll credit to where it's due with, with Shoe Chuck there. On that play, he stayed in the pocket. He stepped up, made a really nice throw. So, Like you just said, Adam, he steps up, he gets a little bit of time, surveys the field, and he has his man in the middle of the field wide open. Yeah, James Former again. I mean, this guy has been all over the place. He's, he's got, got two, special tonight. He's got like, two touchdowns, and we talked about it before. He's that shifty guy that could – make that five yard catch and take it all the way to the house. So he's done a really good job on special teams and they're on the offensive side. Let's we'll see as the it. refs clear this up. All right, so yeah, we, we can't quite understand or hear the refs, what's going on over there. Uh, so as you see the chaos coach is trying to calm everyone down on the sidelines, Mike. Yeah, because this is, it, it is getting a little out of hand. Uh, there's been multiple players thrown out of this game. Uh, and it does look like the penalties aren't going to result in a touchdown because um, it looks like they're they're throwing up down. the the they're hand that's right fourth now. down so it's going to be offsetting penalties there that touchdown will not count they will replay the down yeah they're going like. to replay the See, down no. even even the coaches on the sideline are confused why would you yeah why, why would you signal touchdown if you're just going to scrub and it off that's the what board? i thought too adam that's why i asked you i was a little confused there as to the result of that play so 
Uh, unfortunately for the chaos think with the offsetting penalties. I think, Mike, there they might have just given given the original result of the play, like you said, and then the unsportsmanlike conduct happened. Yeah, because the, the when I saw the flags, they came out first while the play was going, not afterwards. So here it looks like okay. um, they're going to redo this fourth and 11 from the eight yard line oh I'm sorry the 14 yard line so we're gonna have two wide receivers on the near side two on the top running back to the right of Suchuk in the shotgun there's the snap he's looking left throws left he's got a man it's gonna be incomplete he actually had two men out there uh, open he Chose to go on the inside receiver. Sean, what did you see there on that play? I'm not sure which receiver actually he was going for, Mike. It looked like it might have been just a little bit of a behind throw. Let's see if we can get a get a replay here. So the refs are asking for the there it is. clock to get stopped. So, Sean, what did you see here? Let's just take a look here. We got one guy running inside. Oh, that is the touchdown that was called back from – Former. So the the Thunder are going to take the ball over on a turnover of downs here on the 14-yard line of the chaos. Unfortunately, that penalty is costly for both sides as players were ejected and the touchdown was nullified. We have that replay here, Mike, if we want to take a look, quick look here. Like I said, we got a guy coming from the inside. There's two, it looks like an out and a slant, just a little bit behind the receiver. Yeah, I had a feeling if he went towards the goal line there and threw to the corner, that would have been a touchdown because that receiver looked fairly open from my end. So the Thunder are going to start the ball. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Okay, I, time yeah, I think they here. were resetting the, the clock there. Um, and that would be Michael Jaco there uh, helping out in the PA and, doing the scoreboard. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so they're going to come out, two wide receivers on each side, a running back to the left. It uh, looks like the original quarterback is back in. He's looking deep. He's got a man oh. undercut, overthrew everybody there. Uh, he's looking for a flag, but I, I think that was a good no call there. That's good defense on the back end there, Mike. They're not letting anybody get behind him. And, you know, the Thunder try to take advantage of that fourth down and try to take a shot right out uh, right away. And like you said, the original quarterback is back in the game. So Yeah, you, you you have to expect them to start throwing the ball a little bit more now that they've got their number one quarterback back in the game as opposed to the backup. So let's see what they do here on this second and ten. They were making big chunks of gains there in the first half. You kind of expect that they would try and go with that same idea here in the second half, but the chaos must have said something during halftime to try to make an adjustment to stop those big plays. They and look energized, Mike, coming out of halftime yeah, here. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to see. So two wide receivers. There's actually one in motion on the near side, so it's going to be three close to you, one up top, a running back to the left of the quarterback. He's looking to throw, makes a throw mm. over the middle, hits his wide receiver's hands, incomplete pass. So that's awesome. going to bring up third and ten. Third and Sean. Ten why didn't this receiver catch the ball? I mean, it, it's in the like Carl, chaos's favor. Carl Young does a good job underneath, almost getting his hands on that ball. Yeah, so they're going to bring up a third and ten, which is exactly what they wanted to see after not converting that fourth down. Make it hard on the Thunder to move the ball at all. So you have to think that the Thunder are going to come out and throw. Uh, they've come out here in this drive and aired it out uh, two of the the first two plays uh, they're probably with a third and ten you have to figure that they're going to do that same thing so they have one wide receiver to the near side three at the top of your screen with a running back to the left of the quarterback there's the snap he's looking on the right side flushed up, up into the pocket Get there's a pick. pick he's going to take it down on, on the again. right side he's going to be tackled right at the 15 yard line I'm going to go with that was Nick Olsen. Nick Olsen. Big play by Nick Olsen. That's the defensive player of the year from last year. 
There does look like there's another flag on the play. I think that might have been a horse collar. Sean, let's, let's take, take a, a look. Yeah, let's take a look at the replay here, Mike. Nick Olson does a great job. Oh. We're going to go to the referee here, get the signal. Oh, Face yep. mask. It is, it is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to attack on an extra 15 yards for the chaos. So they're sitting very pretty after this turnover. There's that play right here. He, just a tip ball, tip drill. Hey, Nick man. Olson's right oh, there. Under. Got a few blocks upfield, and, and there's the penalty. Great field position for the chaos here. Oh, yeah. So basically that uh, conversion right there on fourth down is nullified. Uh, they're going to get an even better position right now. So they're going to be first and goal from the seven-yard line. So you have to think that with four downs, the chaos are just going to try to pound this ball. They haven't run the ball much today. They've really thrown it a lot. So you'd have to figure that the running backs are fresh here in the second half. They're going to give them the ball. So there it is, two wide receivers and the inside. There's a handoff to the outside. That's Jarrell Johnson trying to get to the corner. He's going to fight himself up to about the six-yard line. So he's going to get just a short gain on that one. It's a hard-fought gain there, Mike. Get a little handoff to the left side. He bounces it outside. The Thunder do a good job of stringing oh, it out. That was Cody Geller. No, I, I understand on that play that the defensive line came in pretty well, but against this 2-5 defense, you, going side to side is really tough sledding. If you're gonna if you're gonna run the ball and run it effectively, you want to pierce it up the middle against this type of defense. Um, unfortunately, Jarrell is not an in between the tackle type runner. No, you you definitely want to go north south here, uh, especially in this part of the field. You don't want to dance around too much and let the defenders kind of converge to you because there's not a lot of field to work with. So one wide receiver to the near side, three to the top, a running back to the left, a Suchuk. He's going to fake. He's going to throw it. Oh. I had a man. He just overthrew him there. Pass it looked complete. like former zone. once again. Yeah, it looked like he had an opportunity to, to bring this one down, Mike. Let's take a look. Uh, a little high. He kind of got a little alligator arms there. A little bit. I would have liked to see a better referee. I think the referee kind of scared him there. Maybe screened him a little right. bit. Yeah, you'd figure when he sees the ball up there that he's going to go for it. He really didn't make a strong attempt to a catch that ball. C.J. Young there. Yeah, C.J. Young. All right. So here we go on a third down. I'm um, sorry, third and goal from the six-yard line. Uh, three wide receivers to the near side, one at the top of your screen, a running back to the left of Suchuk in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's looking right. He's going to short. He's going to be close. He's going to spin. Second, Touchdown. Second effort. Big time. That's exactly what you wanted to see. Um, that's big answer off of the turnover. Touchdown. Chaos. So CJ Young? Yes, I believe that was number 25, CJ Young. Sean Sutton, is that 23? Let's take a look at the replay here. That's a great second effort. Desha Deshaun Sutton is the guy, number 23. That's, like you said, it's just the second effort there to, to make a guy miss and get into the end zone there, give the chaos the lead. Yeah, he well done, Deshaun Sutton. Uh, he kept his feet moving, touchdown. which is exactly what you're taught as a football player. When you stop moving your feet, you allow the defenders to kind of push you. And what he does is he just kept chopping, 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 and it all paid off for six points for the chaos. So it looks like they're lining up to go for two. Uh, you'd have to think that with Brackman singled out on the near side, they're gonna throw him a fade. So they got three wide receivers on the other side, a running back to the right of Suchuk. And there it is, he's All looking right. at Brackman. There it is. Two point conversion completed. Mike, you good. gotta believe that the Thunder conversion. thought exactly what you were saying, that the, that the lob was coming, the fade route was coming. They throw a little nice slant inside, and he gets separation from his man and a gets a two-point conversion. Two -point exactly. Conversion. Sean, they've been running yeah, that game. corner fade for Brackman on numerous yeah, plays for that two-point two. conversion, and there they did exactly right. Let's take a look, Mike. Here we go. He gives it a little, just a little fake to the outside, breaks it to the inside for the slant, and 
like I said, has that separation. Great throw. Yeah, that's a timing route right there. And you can tell that these two have worked together before. So really good job by Suchuk hitting Brackman for that two-point conversion to jump the lead to 22-14 to in favor of the chaos with six minutes and 22 seconds here left in the third. And uh, we'd like to special thanks to uh, Lyle Veterans Memorial. Their goal is to construct a memorial that honors our veterans while at the same time promotes civic pride. The memorial is, an honor, is to honor veterans that have served or are serving our country in any of the five branches of the military. This includes the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and U.S. Coast Guard. So thank you very much to the veterans and uh, thank you to the town of Lyle for setting that up for them. That's really neat. While we, while we have a second, um, something that I found interesting during uh, the Thunder's last drive, they brought in their old quarterback. He got er he got injured in the first half, but he came back out, and they got completely away from what worked for, for him from the first half. They threw on three straight downs. Maybe it's because he wanted to get some sort of vengeance or whatever it was, but the Thunder are winning this game up front. If they want to get back in this game, they need to get back to what they were doing. Um their passing attack seems to only work when they have a strong running game to complement that. Right, exactly, Adam. So that's w what do you want to do. You want to work the run off the pass or the pass off the run. Mm -hmm. and what they were doing earlier in the first half is they were running, uh, running mainly, and then they were using the pass to offset the, the defenders of creeping up and trying to play that run. So let's see what happens here on their next try. So there's the kickoff. It's a short one and a bouncer fielded at the five-yard line. Uh, they're going up the right side. There's flags going everywhere. He's hit right at the 32-yard line. The ball, ball might have come out. The ball came out. The chaos are celebrating as if they have it. So let's see what the referees call. No signal yet. Have we had a signal? No, we haven't had a signal. It, it does look like one of the referees has pointed that it's going to stay with the Thunder. So it's going to be a, a, yeah. a block below the knees, so a chop block. So they're going to bring this one back. So, again, penalties are really hurting they've the they've Thunder. Been, they've really controlled this game, Mike, on both ends. Both teams have had some very costly penalties. And the th what I've seen so far in the second half is kind of flip up the chaos now. The offense has been on the field for the whole quarter. The Thunder's defense has been on the field. So it's kind of flip-flop from the from the first half where the Chaos defense was on the field for a very long time. Yeah, exactly. And that's in favor the of the Chaos. Uh, you want your offensive guys out there kind of pounding that back. defense to wear them down over the course of time. And on top of that, while your offense is out there, your defense is getting a rest on the sidelines. So Sean's exactly right with that point. That's exactly what the chaos want to do. They want to have their offense out there the majority of the time and have their defense fresh and rested when they do come out in the field. So they're going to start off with uh, two wide receivers here on the near side with a man in motion up top. Uh, they're going to look to throw again. He's got the man that was in motion. He's going to make the catch. Uh, they're going to blow the whistle dead right about the 28 29 yard line. A note about this guy in motion. Every time they do that, he's actually moving to the line, he, moving toward the line too soon. Right there, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. It's been a penalty every single yeah, time. Yeah, you're right, Adam. Moment. That's a illegal forward motion, and uh, that should be called. The referees continue to miss it. You have to wonder why the chaos coaches aren't barking at them to call that flag. So that's going to move the chains for the Thunder and give them a first down on the 29-yard line. Uh, they're huddling up right now. They're coming out here. Uh, they're going to have two wide receivers up to the top. It looks like two wide receivers are setting down here at the bottom of your screen. Uh, one running back to the right of the quarterback in the shotgun formation. And there's the snap. He's going to go quick throw over to the right side. There's a screen running up the middle. Uh, he makes a move. He's going to be tackled uh, right about the 36-yard line. It's fortunate for the chaos that he ran into his own line. <laughs> I was yeah. just going to say that. And unfortunately for the chaos, he runs into his own guy here, number 99. Look at the blocking. They had yeah. a lot of white jerseys downfield. Yeah. So, like you said, and unfortunate for the chaos there. Yeah, so the oh looks like Nick Olson was 
coming up limping. Yeah, he's limping. Did you see that? He is not happy. It looks like he's down on the ground. This is uh, a big loss. He's hurt. Pass. Yeah, he, he's the reigning defensive player of the year, so you don't want to see that. So there's the snap. They're going to get a handoff up to the right side. He's going to get the first down. Oh, there's another Penalty. flag. Come on. Well, there's more flags. There's. Uh, I think you'd have to think that these refs are getting tired of throwing these flags, but when they're warranted, uh, it looks like this one's going to be on the chaos, though. Go ahead. I'm sorry, not to make light of it at all, but it, I mean, how many guys have been thrown out of this game? Five or six? Yeah. Ever since the last batch, I believe it was the Thunder's coach, this game has been pretty well toned down since then so the refs were able to get it back in control but it's still been pretty sloppy yeah unfortunately that one's gonna hurt the chaos i uh, wasn't sure, quite sure who was on uh, with that replay it was tough to see uh, so the thunder gonna come out here in a shotgun formation two wide receivers on each side uh, running back gonna get the handoff going up the right side spins up uh, gonna get to oh there's he was whistled down there. Uh, going to get about a three-yard, three to four-yard gain. Yeah. Back on the field. That's good news for the chaos. Uh, you hate to see your middle linebacker out too long with an injury. So maybe he just had a little buzzing going on. So uh, maybe a little cramping potentially. It is hot out there. If these guys didn't hydrate properly, uh, they might be having some issues on the field too. It always with this field turf, it gets a little bit hotter than what it is outside. Uh, we started the game right around 84. It's, it hasn't cooled off much, so it is definitely still warm down there. So two wide receivers, here we go on the each side. And there's a throw out to the right side. He's gonna take it down. He's gonna get the first down, number seven number of seven. the Thunder. Uh, he's gonna take it down right to about the 21 the yard down. line. Marcus, as we take a look at the replay here, they, Adam was kind of talking chaos. about it earlier, the, the way they came out and they threw the, the ball in four straight four straight plays. It looks like they set up the chaos a little bit now. They're getting the chaos upfield. They're using the draw, the screen pass, the swing pass. So they're using that to their advantage They've right gone now. to a much more moderate offense. They're not trying to go for a home run. They're willing to let their athletes make plays. Yeah, they're taking some quick hitters. So we, they've got to make sure that they don't – bite on those so there's a draw up to the left side the running back's going to take it he's going to be in for a touchdown never touched so what we just said mike draws they're taking advantage of the uh, the chaos defenders coming up field too quickly and they're getting some uh, running space up front yeah that's unfortunate right there the running back barely seemed to get touched uh, going 21 yards into the end zone there uh, you'd have to think that they kind of lulled the chaos defense to sleep, like Adam was saying earlier. They made those few questionable calls on the offensive end, but maybe that was to set up what they're doing now in this drive. I, I don't think that you, you use an entire drive to set up another drive afterwards, but their coaches are smart. They probably went on the sideline and said, we went downfield the last drive. They might be looking for us to be aggressive again. Let's tone it down and really go back to doing what we do well. And they went right down the field with it. I right. believe they, th the first play of this possession, they threw it kind of downfield. I think they got that big chunk play, and now they're going back to the running oh, game here. It was, it was on that little wheel with the, with the motion. Right, so they're going to go 4-2. Uh, they got two wide receivers on the near side, one on the top. There's a pump fake. He's going to throw. That's going to be caught. That's what it looks like. Signal? Yeah. There it is. So they're going to tie up the game here. Uh, unfortunate sequence of events there for the chaos. So the, the score is going to be 22 all. That pass complete into the end zone. Uh, there's some pointing Four going on over there by the Thunder. Let's take a look at that. Mike, that was just a beautiful, beautiful ball by number 12. He puts it where his, own, his, his guy could, is the only one that can get it. And uh, right over the shoulder there for the two-point conversion. Yeah, so the, the chaos need to settle down here on defense they didn't look very good on that drive giving up big chunk after big chunk after big chunk so they're gonna have to have a conversation with their defensive coordinators to how they stop the thunder from getting those you know large chunks of yardage and making them work for it a little bit more like they did uh, not sure what they're looking for over there 
but it might be a clock issue. Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Uh, no. Should it show we have two minutes and seven seconds here left in the third. The Thunder are getting ready to kick off the ball to the chaos. Looks like a late lineman is coming out for the chaos on the special teams. They didn't quite have enough guys out there. Uh, a couple more are kind of going out there. Sean, what's they your need count? one more. They got 10 out there got right 10 now? There's 10 guys, they Mike. got 10, Sean? Huh. Well, they probably up oh, there's – Oh, wait, hold on. There he is. They got There's two, the they 11. Got, they got two guys coming out there. All right, well, one ba one came back, uh, and so they do have their 11 out there. You don't want to play 11 on 10 football, Sean, do you? No, never, Mike. Yeah, yeah, they are at a supreme disadvantage. It's not a recipe for success. No. And here is the kickoff. It's going to be a short, low line drive. going to be fielded right at the 10-yard line. So here we go up the right side line. Cuts towards the middle again. He's going to fight to the 35-yard line. So another solid return there by the Chaos. Let's see if they can get the offense rolling once again. Return to the chaos oh, Sean, do you think that uh, how do you think this drive should start off? I think they should kind of try to – they haven't been doing anything on the run. Mike, they did a very good job last possession of kind of controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the pace they gave – Suchuk a lot of time to survey the field, make decisions, and he's doing a better job. He's not getting hit as much as when he started the, f the second half. He was taking a lot of shots. They kind of are st they're starting to protect him a little bit more now. Exactly, and that's what you want to see from your offensive line as the game goes later on. Give your quarterback a chance to make plays down the field. So here we go on this first down play. Uh, two wide receivers on each side, uh, running back to the right of Suchuk. He's going to hand it off up the middle. He's going to cut up the middle, turning, turning, fighting, fighting. He's going to get about eight to nine yards there. That's a very solid effort there by C.J. Young. I think that's Darrell. Oh, see. It's hard to see these numbers, Mike. It, it sure is. Uh, the the. The chaos colors aren't very it's Jarell, good. It's the Jarrell Johnson, Mike. What's that, Jarrell Johnson? Number 20. 20? Yeah, it's tough to see those numbers from this far away. <laughs> and especially their color combinations. And you should have seen it when they got wet, Sean. It was almost impossible for me to see what I was going imagine, on out there. So uh, a good gain on first down. So it's going to bring up a second and two. Again, same set. They're going to throw it to the right side to Brackman. Brackman's going to fight over across midfield into the Thunder territory right about the 48-yard line. So that's going to move the chains. First down, chaos. Yeah, as the clock runs here, Mike, they just get it out to Brackman, let him do work on the outside. He makes a couple men miss and gets the first down. And that's going to be the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, I'm sorry, the third quarter. So we're going to go into the fourth, and we will be right back on SportsTownChicago.com. In a multi-sport race, it's all about time. If your shoes cost you time, they can cost you the race. Now there's a new transition shoe by Pierce Footwear, the first laceless, tongueless running shoe built specifically